Excuse the mess. <laughs> oh dear. These are the temperature sensors, or it's one of the temperature sensors that I got with the BMS. Now, they've upgraded these and they've given different um, sensors now, but these work just as well. Uh, all you do is you solder two wires. Where is one? You can see them in there. So all you do is you just solder two wires, positive and negative, it don't really matter because all there are is a thermistor which is a, a resistor that increases, I think it increases in resistance the hotter it gets. So it doesn't matter, there is no positive, no negative. So I've soldered two wires, this is very thin silicon wire that I bought from China. Um, I bought about 20 metres of it, it's quite cheap actually, I'll put a link in the description. So. What I'm doing is I've put one in there, which I've just covered with captain tape, and then I'm going to put another one round right about there. Or there. No, I'm going to put it in there. And then just feed the wires round and then tape it off so as I can put these to the BMS. This is the right hand battery. Um, it's a 10S 6P. So and the left hand one is going to be a 10S6P the same. So these are the series wires which are soldered up onto each terminal, onto each point. Now these have only got to handle um, 50 amps of absolute maximum, you know, it's 20 amps constant or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join all these into one big connector or maybe two connectors, I don't know yet, but these are going to be the series wires. This one I don't know what to do with yet, I cocked it up slightly. <laughs> this is when I decided that oh, I'll make it quicker and just put one strip and go mental with the welding. It didn't work. So I don't know, I may redo that, I may take that off, although it's a nightmare to get it off. It's, it's Once it's on, it's on. So, I don't know yet. I don't know whether to use... I mean, it's double layered, it's thick enough. I may just use that and do exactly the same as I've done here. Is use one there, one there, one there, one there. So you've got five connectors. And then this is going to be the power side. This, this here is only for the BMS just to test it. So I don't know yet. I think I'm just going to go with whatever's here. It's, it's going to be fine. Trust me, he says. You know when reality bites, well with me it bites hard, um, I've realised now that due to a lot of limitations which I'm not going to go into, I can only run around about 200, 250 amps, I'm not going to go any further because number one these batteries won't take it probably, they will for burst, anyway. These are the negative wires, which I'm going to link all of those into one bunch. They're the, the series wires, which you've got to go to the other side of the battery. I've covered this in Captain Tape. Now this is you've got different sizes of Captain Tape. This is what I use on my 3D printer. Um, it was bloody expensive at the time. I think it was about 50, 50 meters of the stuff. This is the cheapest stuff. You can get it in loads of different sizes and you know, but I don't know where I got that from. I think it was eBay. I'll see if I can find it. And I'll put the description, link in the description. So this is covered in tap caps and tape just to protect it a bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got some neoprene that I put over the top. I've already done the other side. Oh, let's try and turn this up. There the uh the temperature sensors. I've already covered the other side. That's that's double thickness neoprene. That'll be plenty to um, stop it from rattling against the casing. So the battery's going to stick up like that with the leads that are going to go over to the other side to the BMS. So what I'm going to do now is cover it with Captain. Um, done that. Cover it with neoprene just to protect it. Well, I was hoping to get this finished this weekend, but I've honestly, I've had enough. I've had enough. That 
that one's done finished 100% this one still isn't finished not 100% it's about 90% this is the link wire that goes the series link which I've still got to thicken that wire a bit um, that goes along there to take the strain away the same as that this one this is the positive which is just flapping around in the breeze I don't know what to do with it yet, I don't know where it's going to go um, and that one's the negative which is just connected to the negative side on the BMS now it's balancing at the minute yeah, 2 millivolts 2 millivolts <laughs> I'm very happy with that. It's taken quite a while, actually, how long? Oh, only a day. So it's it's done, it's ready. Um, well, things are getting hot, things are getting warm. Well, that, the, the BMS is getting warm because it's balancing and it's running at about 180 milliamps. So I'm just going to finish the perfection on the BMS, on the wiring, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, on the balancing. Then I'm going to turn it off, leave it overnight and see what's happened, see if it actually drifts at all. Hopefully it shouldn't do. Well, it won't do. Well, you know, it's not going to do. So, uh, what else are we going to do with this? Oh, yeah, I've run out of neoprene. I haven't done this side. This side of this one. I've done a bit of it, but I've got to wait for more neoprene to come in there. I've got another two layers to put over that. The same as I did on this, I think there's three, there's actually three layers on here, although there's only two at the top, there is actually three in the middle. I'm not going to explain, can't be asked. So, what's next? I can get the boxes, I can put them in the box, and then I can start cutting the boxes down to the right size, shape or whatever. I think that's the way I'm going to go anyway, I don't know yet. I've got something else up my sleeve. Do you want to see it? We'll see. Next week. I need to share something with you. This is my battery. This is my BMS, which isn't actually plugged in at the minute. This is a charger which I got from China. There's the top case. It's all in uh, the usual Mandanese and no idea what it says. The good thing is... I've got the good thing is I've got this brilliant, brilliant app called Translate. And the app actually translates, I don't know if you can see it. The app actually translates live on here so I can actually see what it bloody well says. Because the manual, everything is in Chinese, Mandarin Z. There's the manual. It's not even a literal translation, it's all in... Anyway, what I tried to do, I took it all apart because out of here I'm only getting 1.8 volts. It fluctuates between 1.8 and 5 volts. So, it's la labelled on there, live neutral. Even in the instructions it says live neutral. Anyway, I checked it. That's live and that's neutral with no load, nothing plugged into it. Obviously, this is the battery plugged in at the minute. It's exactly how it should be when you switch it on, but there's no, you don't get any voltage out whatsoever. Now, I noticed underneath here, I'm not going to touch it because this is plugged in. Underneath here, there's a relay. And I thought, why isn't the relay clicking in? Anyway, after going through the translate and everything in the instructions, it says about a light that's on here, which you can see that red LED there is lit. That is wired backwards. That's taken me two hours of tracing all the wiring and everything else and the, the components. Everything seems okay, not a problem. Thanks, China. I'm not moving anything because this is all live. Uh, there's my battery, there's the BMS, obviously, and here's the app. This is a beta version of the app where I've changed all the, I've changed all the fonts, they're a lot smaller now, so you can see that 
I'm actually pumping in 73 or 80 watts, whatever it is, don't know. Charge current is just at one amp. Um, and you can see a lot more of the cells now. I've also changed the layout of this or changed the size of the font so you've got more more real estate. So it's actually working. What I've done is the C negative on the battery goes to the negative on the power supply or the charger and the positive goes directly to the battery which is this one here. Uh, all you do is you fire that up. That light, there's a light here which, oh hang on. You see the light on there? Well when you've got the right battery connection the light comes on and then you can turn it on and you can start charging. This thing here adjusts the current So, it's working anyway, thank God. Oh, lovely. Finally, that took me two hours. I took that apart, spent two hours trying to trace where the problem was and found out that, I'll post a screenshot here of the wiring connection that they actually give you. When I looked at the manual, hang on, when I looked at all the manual, which is all in Mandanese, uh, there's no English on there whatsoever, not even Chinglish, nothing, absolutely nothing. So there's no way of actually figuring out what the wiring was. But I found out, because it's there. How long has neutral been positive and live been negative? <laughs> you bloody cowboys. <laughs> So, I've wired my cable up that I'm going to be using, which I'm also going to be using these, um, what are they now? Nutric, Nutric speak on connectors, uh, which Andy is using. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to be using those. Um, I can't really do a lot more on the BMS or uh, the battery purely because I'm waiting for the casings to be done. I'm not going to tell you anything about that, but you'll see it in a later video. So it's all working, it's all charging. I'm going to get that up to 3.7 volts, which is, shouldn't be very long, 698. And then that's that done, and I'm going to work on someone else. I've decided I'm going to put some different spokes on. These are the original ones, which are 14 gauge. These are 12 gauge. Uh, I think I only paid 15 quid. <laughs> 15 quid for 40 spokes. Unbelievable from China. Custom made. 205 mil long. That's exactly the length I need. So I'm going to redo the wheel. Uh, obviously, this is going to be. It's going to take a long time to do it as it always bloody does, but you know, it's got to be done. Of you may have noticed that I'm having to screw some of these in when I was putting them in I had to screw them in from that side 
it's purely because these holes are for 14 gauge spokes and I had to cut it, I had to drill very slight, it's half a millimetre I think half a millimetre too small these holes are so I had to drill them out half a mil that's all so that's all done so what I'm going to do is put it back on the bike and true it up again this is a wheel there it's a Muxus 3k turbo v3 v2 can't remember anyway it's rated at I think it's 3 kilowatt um, but I've been pumping 15 kilowatts for it as you know I've got to strip it down two reasons number one I, put, I want to put the ferrofluid in and number two I want to change the spokes because I've got some more which I can't find so I don't really I'm not looking forward to this but it's got to be done here we go There you go, only took but a minute, or five, or ten. I've got to undo all these. And then someone said to use a puller to actually get it off, but I ain't got a puller. Now I've got to do the side of not Oh, I've got to take the, I've got to take the free wheel off first. And I can't remember where my tool is. I've got that off, I wasn't doing that on camera, <laughs> it's not easy, uh, especially on this thing because, because that, hang on, I had to make my own tool, well this isn't, a, I had to modify this tool and cut that out there, so as it goes over the shaft, it ain't easy to get that off, anyway, I've now got to take all these bolts out, Right, bolts are out. Now, people have used pullers on these to get the bloody things out, but I don't think you need a puller. I think you need a tool like this, which is a bloody screwdriver. Ah! Look at that. That bearing's free as anything. As you can see, uh are these the thermistors, those two there, and they're all the hull. There's three. Why's there three lots of wiring? Those are the hull. Oh, sorry. Uh, is it? They're the hull sensors, and they must be the thermistors. Don't know. Don't care. Uh, what I was thinking of doing if I could was beefing the wiring up I don't know um, if I'm going to be able to obviously I've got to take the other side off I'm going to take the other side off as well I don't know why <laughs> For anybody who was wondering how you get the motor out, get the stator out and everything, <laughs> it's easy. Ah, oh, 
comes off. There you go. So, I'm going to get that. I'm going to grind that bloody thing off there and that. Just to give me one millimetre more clearance. I, bet, I can't believe how good that bearing is. There's the two banks of hall sensors. And you can see where they've assembled it. They haven't actually <laughs> done a very good job. Uh, but there's the... Well, it doesn't really matter whichever one's the main one, whichever one's the backup one. So there are the hall sensors. I thought they were actually spaced around a stator, but they're actually not. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Oh, there's that. There's one thermistor. So there's the spare, or there's the, the other thermistor. There's no crap in there, there's nothing built up. I'm going to wipe it through with, um, not here, not this bit. I'm going to wipe this bit with WD-40 just to stop the rust. It's only on one side, only on one area. It's strange, but... I mean, this has done 2,000 miles. It's done bloody well. So, I'm going to clean that up. I have cleaned it up. I'm going to get my ferrofluid inside there. 